I'm really so done with this. I'm done with this racist narrative. I don't want to have to talk over Let's people, talk but we have facts. to go Let's back and forth. Oh, and she snapped the hook. <laughs> she snapped the hook. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Self preoccupation and articulation of your. Let me finish. What you're saying what here. Saying right so now, now what happens to Black America happens to you. So Black people network. are reduced to what? Trump. Can you, uh, uh, Ari? Can I finish my point? I didn't jump on her. Well, we, can I <laughs> Why do you argue like this? We're joined by conservative activist Candace Owens. She's with Turning Point USA, and she argues African Americans are doing better under the Trump presidency. She's drawn praise for the way she thinks from none other than Kanye West, who has praised Trump, while the president also hailed her impact and contribution to this dialogue. On the other side, we have Georgetown professor Michael Eric Dyson, a nationally recognized expert on civil rights, who argues Trump is emboldening white supremacists. He's the author of 21 books, including what truth sounds like. Uh, thank you both for doing this discussion. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Mm. Uh, Candace, when you look at that rhetoric and you look at what appears to be a shift in the way Donald Trump talks, do you think he is embracing a type of racial division that is problematic for us to operate as a civil society? Well, the first thing that I look at is the date of the tapes. It's remarkable that we are pulling tapes that you've gone into the archives and we're looking at the year 2000. I think people are entitled to evolve their... Wait, what? What tapes are they talking about? <laughs> what tapes are they talking about? Thoughts over 18 years. Um, the second thing that I think is quite remarkable here is that we're talking about racial division and what sows racial division. I think the fact that every time I'm invited onto this network, I'm being asked to dispute another black person. The black community is broken up um, in general, and I'm, I don't want to partake in any of that. We're uh, just ending a weekend where 71 black people were shot in Chicago, 13 of them killed, and we're not talking about that. Instead, Wait, we're talking well, about old We're going to talk about all that. You have Donald a problem. Trump. No, we're not. I have a problem but that we're doing wall to wall you have a problem on two with who you're appearing on this? No, I don't. Ooh. So he's arguing her right now. So let's see how this turns out. Um, I never heard of uh, Michael Eric Dyson, <clears throat> but he's a professor, and I'm in college, so we might have a connection there. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Candace, you have I'm a problem saying, with who you're appearing no, on the segment with? I'm actually respectfully saying to him that we should both decline tearing apart the black community for the sake of television. And because MSNBC always invites me on to do that, I am declining to do so when our community is mourning the 71 people that were shot over the weekend. We need to stop this warfare and come together and talk about things that matter. And what is going on in Chicago is a bigger topic and should be a bigger topic on this network than what Trump said 18 years ago, whether or not it means that people change over 18 years, which, shocker guys, they do. Well, I'm going to have the professor respond, but I have to respond on behalf of myself. You knew what you were invited to discuss. 18 years ago, I was a toddler. I was a toddler. But she has a point, man. I don't even know what story she's referring to, honestly. But um, whatever she's talking about, she's right. Like, if it's a uh, if it's a tragedy that happens within our community, why are you having somebody on here to talk about what somebody said 18 years ago? I'm assuming, because just how the media works, that uh, <laughs> them talking about um, Trump rather than the, the the unfortunate incident is due to the fact that whatever Trump said is more entertaining and more people care about it. That's just how media works. But I honestly don't even know what tapes they're referring to, man. Gus, and we're happy you're here. It's very important to me in this show that we have these conversations and invite a lot of people of all perspectives. If there's a problem with that, I, I think you knew what the invite was to, to begin with. Professor Dyson, your thoughts? Well, look, we're dealing with a person who has not only radically emboldened the prospects of bigotry in this country, the resurgent, recrudescent oh. hate that he has articulated. If you can't beat him, coin him. So he opposes Pat Buchanan on the one hand when it's to his own political advantage, and then subsequently when the real beliefs uh, emerge from Mr. All right, bro, got that vocabulary. I'm not even going to hold you. He got that vocabulary. He got her looking a little shook. So how's Candace going to respond? I don't know. It's like, no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But he has a really nice vocabulary, man. Trump, we see that his vicious animus toward black people, gay people, Mexicans, Muslims, women, and the like is a kind of cornucopia of hate that has been brashly articulated by a man of manifest lack of serious coherence 
chaotic intelligence and the lack of an ability to really express himself by not only pulling upon the strands of history, but refusing to take into consideration what's going on today. So I think in one sense, if we're going to talk about what, if we're going to be honest about Donald Trump, he has not helped uh, black people. He has not enabled African-American people to move forward. He's riding an, a crest and a wave of economic prosperity put in place by his predecessor, Barack Obama. He has refused to acknowledge the centrality of police brutality and unarmed black people being assaulted by people in this country. So the reality is, is that Donald Trump, while claiming through rhetoric to be for the blacks, what he has done is undermine the capacity of African-American people to exist in a country where it's not only about the economic facts and the wherewithal that we uh, com contend with, it is about the tone. It is about the rhetoric. It is about the atmosphere that has been unleashed here. And Donald Trump has done something very dangerous and destructive. He can't see the difference between an anti-fascist and a person who supports it. He can't see the difference between somebody who's against black people and who is for them. So when he draws false equivalencies between both sides, he negates the ability to say, look, I believe in rational civil discourse in America, but I take a side morally and politically. We are now 53 if I, if years to the day. for a quick second. 53 um, years. Let me finish this. 53 years. Bro talks a lot, though. I'm not even going to cap on. He's been talking for like two minutes. I was trying. I thought this was a debate. I thought this was a debate. But bro kind of talks a lot, man. But let me know in the comments, is what he's saying true? Like, does Trump just ignore the moral responsibilities he would have as a president? Because if he does, that could be a really big problem, man. I see why people wouldn't mess with him if he is doing it. Beyond the date like of the voting, time. let me finish Candace, this. We'll yeah. go to we'll go to the professor, professor and then we'll go back to you, Candace. This is, this is 50, professor 53, Dyson, you can finish, and then we'll go right. back to Candace. Here we are, 53 years past the Voting Rights Act. We've seen the resurgence of an attempt to nullify and destroy that black vote. We've seen attempts to somehow uh, circum you know circumnavigate around uh, black political citizenry and agency. So all I'm saying is, if we're concerned about black people, we've got to be concerned about poverty and equality. I don't think nobody's trying to destroy the black vote. If anything, I think the black vote is being manipulated rather than destroyed. But that's just my... That's what I think, man. I think the black vote has been, has been manipulated for a long time. People have been lying to black people forever, saying that if you vote for us, we'll do this for you. Or if you vote for us, we'll do that for you. And we'd be like... And us believing it, we'd be like, okay, you said you'd help us out. Then people get in office and nothing changes. This is the problem that I see in, in the community regarding the black vote, man. We have put so much trust in certain politicians, and over time, nothing has happened, or at least nothing noticeable has happened, not compared to the promises that were made to our community. There was so many promises made that were not, ex I mean, that were not brought into action, and it just, it makes us sick and tired of it, bro. After a certain point, it just makes us tired of hearing it all the time. Like, all these promises that were made were never kept. Lack of access to education, plus the kinds of s sorts of violence that we see directed toward black right. people in this Great country. Way Candace, to end the go conversation. ahead. Sorts of violence as being directed towards black people. Am I black? I'm curious if I'm black because I'm a black conservative and I am not hearing anything that is said about the fact that about 25 white Democrats assembled to kick me out of a restaurant yesterday to throw water and to throw eggs at me because I am a conservative that supports Donald Trump. The very Bless same you. Donald Trump, okay? The very same Donald Trump that has not Obama. Obama did not do this. It's because President Trump has been slashing regulations and it has brought this economy to a place it has never been at, okay? We have unemployment that's an all-time low for both women. You brought up women, you brought up gays, you brought up black people. Unemployment Mexicans. is at an all-time mm -hmm. low across the board. You guys to refuse to acknowledge the truth that we are doing better. You want to talk about fascists? Antifa attacked me. This is an all-white gang that attacked me and attacked an all-black police force in Philadelphia, okay? And they claim to be fighting racism. How is it plausible? Professor, that you allow this to happen to your community because you've decided that because we are ideologically conservative, nah, you, you are okay this. with this. You're okay with the resources of, of the Democrats. I said a word. I, don't, don't cut me off. I you, said did. A word. you just said a lot of words. A I didn't of, say a actually, word. If we, uh, no, no, no. Was counting, I, I said nothing about count, you. Now you're cutting me off. I said me nothing okay? about you. No, 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 no. no, 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 no I find what happened to you reprehensible. I still have to keep it going, Candace. Candace, we're going to take a pause. No, no, no. Why is he pausing her video? Even though I just paused both of them. Why are you talk make say, saying she can't talk no more? Dude just talked for like 15 minutes. Video only six minutes long. He was talking for five of the six minutes. 
So how you cutting her off right now? Uh, but you ain't cut you ain't cut cuz off, man. And this is the problem, bro. I don't even. I'm not on either side. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I'm not on either side of the spectrum, man. I don't. I, I don't even know enough about either side to be on either side. But my thing is this: if I'm trying to learn about the sides here, I'm trying to learn about the sides. How come one is always so biased towards one side and not the other? It just makes someone who doesn't know about it automatically side with Candace in this situation. I don't even know her. I don't know her beliefs. But even though I don't, it just makes you want to side with her because you just you, you're trying to bully her on the show a little bit. I didn't get to finish. She just went you, on for five minutes straight. You are attacking your argument. I'm going to let you finish, but if you're calling out my professor, I have to give him time. So, Candace, go ahead. Liberals have been attacking conservatives, and you guys say nothing about it. Blacks were attacked yesterday, okay? And they were attacked because they support Donald Trump. Black support for Donald Trump has doubled since this time last year. You guys can try to pretend that he is pushing in a racist era in this country when, in fact, we know the Democrats are the racists, have always been the racists. The party's never switched. And you should know this as a civil rights person. You know the history. You know the people so Candace, under the hood of the KKK. Let me, let me respond. Candace, I'm going to give... And the give, party never switched. I want to hear Candace. Today, I'm going to give the professor a chance to respond. You should defend what happened to me yesterday and defend it, our community being attacked because we support Donald Trump because we understand that we have better okay. economic opportunities under him than we ever had in Obama. Let me, and let me shame say on you so for spreading in Obama Candace, who I'm allowed give the, the professor a chance to respond under his administration. He allowed the bloodshed and Trump wanted to send this. the National Guard and the Democrats stopped him. I'm really so done with this. I'm done okay. with this I don't, I don't racist narrative. Let's talk over Let's people, talk but about we have facts. to go back and forth. Oh, and she snapped on him. <laughs> she snapped on him. <laughs> she snapped on him, bro. She snapped on him. She snapped on him, bro. She said we have way more opportunity under Trump than we ever did. Than we ever. Say now, but she snapped on him, bro. I really want to hear what he got to say. <laughs> She's not little bit. Yes. Candace, we're going to have to take a pause there. Couple things. You're you're making a personal attack on the other guests, so what I have to I give them a chance to respond. Let me let me respond. First and of all, I, I also never have to said... say and professor Nah, you attacked them. You attacked them. You attacked them. I'm not even going to cap. You attacked them. So I'm going to go back to you. I also have to say mm. the topic of this discussion that we have tried and, and perhaps are, are failing on live television to discuss right. is Trump policy. The incident that you're referring to <clears> yesterday <throat> is, is not necessarily this topic. It's a Democrat uh, policy. And so we have to Waters, gather see them more information. Go up to them. It's, so it's I'm going to go to the professor. Professor, yeah, you get me, a chance me, to respond, this. sir. First of all, I never said anything about Ms. Owens. I never directed any animus, any particular rhetoric, any any conversation toward her. So first of all, when she say you allowed it, first of all, I'm not God. I don't control the universe <laughs> or weather. I don't control the atmosphere, geology, or geography. So I did not point these people toward you. I think it's reprehensible that any human being is, uh, uh, if you will, put out of a particular establishment because of her ideology. I think that that's problematic. So I did not suggest that. Number two, uh, yeah, you are black and I am black. But that doesn't mean that automatically we agree with it. You didn't support it and you're not God. That was good. Nah, he ain't with that one. You're not, he isn't God. But bro, you didn't defend it either. So you didn't support it, but you didn't defend her. So I see why she said something. But this conversation is not about that. That's what, the, that's what the person said. With everything, of course not. Let me finish. Now, now, what I'm saying to you is that when you talk about me as disrespectful, uh, the, the, here's here's what's interesting to me. Uh, you have come on here and, like Donald Trump, reduce everything to narcissistic self preoccupation and articulation you're of your. Let me finish. <laughs> what you're saying what here. Saying right so now, now what happens to black America <laughs> happens to you. So black people are reduced to what? Uh, can you, uh, Ari? Can I finish my point? I didn't jump on her. Can I finish my? Ah, she's funny. <laughs> she funny, man. <laughs> Narcissistic, supercalifragilistic, espiata, OC. Like, bro, what are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about, man. It made me feel a little slow watching this. I don't even know what he's saying. He's like narcissistic, chiropractic, like, cinematic. Like, bro, what? <laughs> but all jokes, man. I'm not even... I'm not trying to take his eye here. But he did... <laughs> He did have a point. He didn't know uh, he's not God. He didn't control it. But, bro, what are you talking about, man? This is just funny, if anything. My point. A bunch of big Can I finish my point? Myself. Can I We're finish out of time? We, had, we put You're aside eight minutes. Narcissism, whether black or white, happens. is problematic. So Here's my point. Incapable Dyson. of arguing. I Therefore, she articulates. We will be right back. Bless your heart, little girl. 
Oh, dude is dude is wow, man. They was going at each other, bro. That was so funny. He said, "Bless your heart, little girl." That was disrespectful, man. She's a grown woman. But yeah, if y'all have any more suggestions, <laughs> that was funny. That was funny, man. That was hilarious. If you have any more suggestions, comment them down below. <laughs> I catch y'all later. I catch y'all later.